Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this morning's webinar, Avoiding the Three Biggest Cash Flow Potholes in Trucking. Today's presentation will take about 30 minutes, which will include time for questions. So as questions do come to you, please send them through to us using the chat function that's on your screen. And if there's any that we can't get to within the time frame, uh, we'll be in touch with you immediately after the webinar. Uh, we'll also be sending out a recording of this webinar to all of you following the event, so you don't need to be scribbling down notes right now. Um, before we get into the meat of the presentation, I wanted to quickly introduce who we are at Tailwind and today's presenters, Linda Clare and John Percy. Tailwind is a comprehensive transportation management system that helps you run your freight business efficiently and effectively. Our goal is to help those running trucking companies and freight brokerages improve their profit, increase their cash flow, and give them a bit more time at the end of their day to help them feel the wind at their back. And now, a lady who never lets a pothole slow her down, Linda Clare. With over 40 years of experience, in the transportation industry, Linda has been a dispatcher, a compliance officer, a controller, and now she's a head trainer here at Tailwind, teaching our customers how to best leverage their trucking software to avoid common industry pitfalls. She has also taught hockey pros how to skate. True story. Uh, we also have John Percy. John is another transportation industry veteran who's worked from the pavement up. He's been a bike courier, a dispatcher, an operations manager, and now he's leading customer success and business development efforts at Tailwind. And he looks pretty cool when he rides his bike into work. Uh, and with that, I'll turn the presentation over to Linda. Thanks so much, Brad. And hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. As Brad has mentioned, I am the Training and Implementation Manager here at Tailwind. My entire career has been in the supply chain beginning as a receiver in a warehouse in 1973. I have enjoyed quite the range of transportation jobs from warehousing to freight forwarding to trucking, receiving my degree in transportation in 1985. While in the trucking industry, I've had lots of exposure to different dispatch software programs, including Tailwind. So when the opportunity came for me to work at Tailwind, I leapt at the chance, as I always found it to be an exceptional piece of software backed up by an awesome team of support staff and developers who listen to the needs and feedback of their customers. Today, we're going to talk about the three biggest cash flow potholes. Cash flow can be one of the biggest challenges of trucking companies. All of your costs are paid out upfront, like Investing in your equipment, whether tractors or trailers, your authorities, and insurances, and fuel. These are all paid out before you even move a load one mile. Very often, we have to deal with slow paying customers, and together, this can put an incredible strain on our cash flow. So, pothole number one slow paying customers. I am sure you have all had one of those conversations with a customer that is desperate to get their load moved. They offer you a good rate and you do a great job for them. And then they take 90 days to pay you. They achieved what they wanted. They got the load moved on their time frame and then strung you out. Happens in trucking all the time. Did you know that your invoice or receivable starts depreciating the minute you send it? The cost of carrying that receivable starts the depreciation right away, and the longer you carry it for, the more it depreciates. So working for a customer that takes a long time to pay you is a huge pothole. Now, while we all need customers to move loads for, and in today's highly competitive transportation world, customers can sometimes have the upper hand. But here are things you can do to take the control back. Number one, vet your customers. Do credit checks, trade, and bank references on them. A bit of work at the front end may well save you working for a customer that does not pay their bills in a timely manner. Ensuring you are vetting your customers will help your cash flow 
enabling you to get better rates and with good service provided will allow your customers to recommend you to other customers. Building your reputation to be a carrier that delivers on time and without claims brings not only loyalty from the customers you serve, but will also lead to more customers. That old adage of providing good customer service really does ring true. Customers are always happy to get a good rate, but rates mean nothing if the service is not there. Your customers will remember that bad service long before they remember the good rate. Two, state your terms. Make sure your terms are clearly stated on both your credit application and your invoice. Have your customers sign a credit application before doing any work for them and keep that signed credit app attached to the customer record. Three, stay away from load board loads if possible. These just aren't the best loads nor the best rates as the load boards inflame and encourage more competition which typically leads to lower rates. The heyday of trucking ended in the 80s with deregulation. Prior to that, we all had to file our tariffs, which kept our rates protected. Today, we are in a constant battle to build, bid the job high enough to make a profit and low enough to get the load. Finding customers that are more interested in your service rather than your rates will help you achieve this. And I guarantee, with a little hard work and some legwork, you can find those customers. So look for actual cups, customers, not loads from a load board. Build a relationship with them. Become part of their team. Offer to be a partner in their success. Back to you, Brad, for some poll. Yeah, so now for a bit of audience participation. Uh, we have a quick survey question for you. What percentage of your customers would you consider slow paying? It would be 0 to 10%, 10 to 25%, 25 to 50%, or, or more than 50%? We'll give, uh, give folks a little bit more time here to, to answer. Interesting, we see a pretty, pretty even split thus far. I'll, uh, I'll be sharing this immediately afterwards, just take, waiting for a few more people to get their votes in. All right, so we'll, we'll close that off and, and share the results. So as you can see, we actually have a pretty, pretty Big split, so we got uh, just over 30% getting uh, under 0 to 10%, which is great. Uh, 10 to 25, uh, you know, that, that seems to be pretty good, but the, the more than 50%, that's definitely uh, areas where we need to be focusing, and definitely a, a bigger pothole for, for those folks. And with that, I will uh, turn things back to Linda. Thanks, Brad. That's interesting, Paul. No one in that 25 to 50% range. Um, so, pothole number two, everyone, sitting on your receivables. While working for slow paying customers might be pothole number one, closely related to this is pothole number two, sitting on your receivables. As mentioned, your invoice starts depreciating the day you send it off to the customer, and the longer it remains unpaid, the more depreciation hits and affects your cash flow. So sitting on your receivables can be extremely hazardous to the financial well-being of your company and your cash flow. You need to manage and work your receivables. We may hate doing it, but making those receivable calls. Start the day the invoice is due to you and make a weekly call until the invoice gets paid. That old adage of the squeaky wheel gets the grease is really true. Keep bugging the payable person at that company you are collecting from with phone calls and emails. Work your receivables at the very least weekly. Also, run AR reports weekly. Running an AR report will track your receivables on a weekly basis. 
This can be very beneficial. Making notes on customer records as to the conversation that was had during the receivable call can help you understand your customer's payment schedules and give you a history of this particular customer. Sometimes it just isn't worth it to haul a load for a customer that pays in unacceptable terms. Remember, your invoice starts depreciating the day you send it. And last, set credit limits and adhere to those limits. Set a limit of the exposure you are comfortable with. Find a software that will restrict the dispatcher from creating loads for a customer that has reached their credit limit. Dispatchers don't often care about how much money a customer owes you. Their job is to find loads and keep the wheels turning on all the trucks in your fleet. Use software to your advantage and set credit limits so that a dispatcher cannot have the ability to expose you to more than you are willing to accept. We're going to go back to Brad now. Yeah, I have a little bit more audience participation here. How long does it generally take you to get your customers to pay uh, once they receive their invoice? Is it 0 to 15 days, uh, 15 to 30 days? 30 to 60 days or more than 60 days? We'll give folks a few minutes to get back to us. And definitely interesting results so far. Give a couple more seconds here. It looks like we've got a last minute one in there. All right, we'll close that off and uh, and show you the results. So while it looks like there are uh, a few that are getting in at uh, zero to 15 days, the majority are seeing 30 to 60 days, which is is what we probably hear from most of our customers. So not not super super surprising there. So hide that and uh, we'll move on to pothole. Number three, Linda? Thanks, Brad. So pothole number three is all about those proofs of delivery. This one item is by far the most important in managing your cash flow. Most customers will require a proof of delivery before accepting the invoice for the movement of freight. Waiting and relying on drivers to get those PODs back to the home terminal by any means can cause a serious delay in invoicing. Are you in a position to keep financing your customers? Are you in a similar situation as one of our customers? They move around 50 loads a month, so had 50 invoices to go out. The time it took to get a POD back to their office, have it processed and attached to an invoice, then mailed, and finally into their customers' hands, could be up to 30 days. Just think of all that money that was sitting out there. If, even if interest on the cost if each of these loads was just one dollar a day they were losing out on fifteen hundred dollars a month wouldn't it be nice if we could all send our invoices out the day we deliver the load instead of waiting for drivers to return to home terminals or paying out all that money for drivers to courier their trip envelopes and proofs of delivery back to the home terminal wouldn't it be so helpful to our cash flow if we could just invoice the customer on the day we deliver the load? Well, you can now with our new POD Complete app. It will allow your driver to capture a picture of the signed POD and upload it seamlessly into your database, attaching it to the proper invoice. This gives you the ability to invoice the same day as the load delivery which in turn will have serious positive effects on your cash flow. I'm going to turn this over to John now, who's going to demonstrate for us exactly how our new POD Complete works. John? Awesome. Uh, thank you, Linda. Uh, folks, as Linda mentioned, we've recently launched a, a new app that allows you to get your PODs into your Tailwind system. I just want to disclose something here. I'm going to be showing the steps today as would be seen from the driver's perspective. 
Uh, we do include templates and tutorials which will be applicable at your end for getting your drivers registered. Now, in this example, uh, we're going to utilize my driver, Kyle, as I've got him listed here as Tailwind or TW24. Once Kyle, in this case, logs in with his username and password, he's going to be ready to start receiving dispatches via the POD Complete app rather than waiting for any calls or any emails. Now, as you can see, POD Complete allows you to send out shipment details, pickup locations, commodity, and delivery destination, and the status of each order is distinguished by color. So we can move actually from a green, orange, and a teal coloring, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now with Kyle picking up at the FTW Command Center. When he arrives at the pickup location, he simply clicked on the Arrive button, and you can see that has updated the status, which then gets pushed over to Dispatch. Once Kyle is loaded or scaled out, he'd follow the same process by clicking on the Departed button, and this will alert the Dispatch that they're en route to the delivery destination. Now, please remember, folks, this is all happening in real time, so there's no need for you to be wasting time making any check calls. Now, I'm going to jump ahead in time, and we're going to scroll down here to our delivery destination. Now, when the driver does arrive, they'll simply click on the arrived icon exactly the same way as they did when they were picking up their order. Once the driver is unloaded, they can then click on the departed icon, which is updated in blue, and from here they can meet with the dock foreman or the consignee to finalize things as far as paperwork is concerned. Now, the second part of this, and at the essence of POD Complete, is managing the delivery details and sending over the proof of delivery. To send the POD back to the office, the driver will click on the Send POD button, which is at the bottom right. This will open the camera phone so they can take a picture of the signed bill of lading. So we're going to do an example of that here in real time. You'll see that there's a blue checkbox here to say that we've captured the picture. So now we're going to click on that to render it. So you can see a rough example here, guys. Now I'm instructed to click the next button. It's been scanned, and the last step here for us, or for Kyle in this instance, is to hit Save. The POD has now been transmitted. The driver is not required to do anything else, but if you'd like him to associate an order with it, we can simply click a number and hit OK. You'll now see that you got confirmation that the POD has been successfully uploaded. And magically, that's pretty much all the driver needs to do. So with this, this app, you've eliminated a need for those check calls. You've reduced the need to sort through a ton of paper. And you've essentially eliminated the need for the drivers to stop and courier any paper PODs back to the office. By getting these PODs back more quickly, you can get paid that much faster, and that really is going to improve your cash flow. As an example, the numbers that Linda quoted earlier actually came from a calculation made by one of our existing customers. Now, this customer was delivering an average of 50 loads a month, and they figured that a driver would wait until he had five completed loads 
before sending them via courier, which would cost roughly $10. There was also the cost of the interest that accumulated each day between a load being delivered and a final invoice getting into the shipper's hands, which was generally 30 days. Next came the actual bookkeeping labor associated with finding those PODs and associating them to an outgoing invoice. Then the actual mailing of those PODs and invoices out to customers was another step. Now, with Tailwind and POD complete, all of this happens electronically. PODs are received immediately on load delivery and are associated with the order in Tailwind. Invoices can then be transmitted immediately via email and also can be made available through the customer portal should you choose to provide that to your customers, which can also be run out of Tailwind. So with 50 PODs needing to be processed a month in this example, you're seeing a saving of over $20,000 per year. So now with all that math done, Linda, I'm going to turn that back over to you. Actually, I'm going to jump in there because we have one more, uh, one more question and one more poll question here for our audience, um, just about, uh, about getting PODs back. So folks, for you, I wonder if I know how your drivers are currently getting you their PODs. Is it by courier or are they driving them back to HQ themselves, uh, faxing them from truck stops? Do they have another way or uh, capturing PODs on their phone? Or maybe they're doing something else, maybe a, a carrier pigeon or... I'm not too sure what else. Oh, there. We we'll give folks a few more seconds. Okay, I think we're getting close to most folks answering. Couple more, couple more. All right, we'll, we'll give you ten, ten more seconds. All right, it looks like most folks have the answer, so I'll close that off and share that out. So it looks like um, we got people that are driving them, faxing them. Um, they do have POD capture, which is great. Um, and 40% other, so that that this yeah. be a little bit interesting yeah. to uh, to dig into to find out okay. oh, how how other people are are getting it there. Thanks, folks. I'll hide that one there and turn things back over to Linda. Uh, thanks, guys. That was great to see that, John. Um, how cool it is that we can actually invoice our customers on the day of delivery. But I want to just give you a quick recap on how to avoid your three biggest cash flow potholes. On pothole one, those slow paying customers. Here, you need to vet your customers. Clearly state your terms with them and try to avoid overusing load boards. Pothole two, sitting on those receivables. The fix here is pretty much brute force. You need to work your receivables and make your calls. You need to stay on top of what's happening by running weekly accounts receivable reports. And you need to set credit limits so don't start so you don't start extending too much credit to customers who don't pay quickly. And pothole three, those proofs of delivery. Here you want to leverage technology like Tailwind POD Complete to get your PODs in immediately. You want to invoice your customers electronically and include the EPOD. You need to stop financing your customers and invoice them as soon as a delivery is made, which gets you your payment that much faster. Great, we're gonna open the floor up for questions and I'm gonna turn this back over to Brad to field those questions. Thanks a lot, Linda, and thank you everyone for the questions you have coming in. I'm not gonna take a lot of time, uh, just get straight right on into them. 
Um, so somebody asked, uh, can you please tell me more ways to vet my customers or steps to take to check them out before taking that load? Uh, sure, I'll take that one, Brad. Um, truly, it's it's all about doing the work up at the front end. You know, you can call a bank reference and, you know, Mr. Banker is going to be nice because that person's a customer. It's all in the trade references and it's all in the questions you ask their trade references. Make sure they're providing references of people that, of trucking companies that have actually hauled loads for them. Ask specific questions. What was the high credit extended? How long did they take to pay their invoices? Were there any claims or short payments? So it's all the legwork at the front end to vet your customer. And then that gives you the ability to weed out your customers and keep just the good ones. That makes sense. Good. Uh, another question that had a little bit more, uh, wants more information on POD Complete and how it communicates with the software. Um, how can it tell, I guess, within the software that a load has been delivered? Uh, John? Can you show that one here? Yeah, sure, Brad. Yeah, if we can just pull up maybe an example of the order screen from the dispatcher's perspective or the order taker's perspective. I think that's there. Yeah, so if we want to just update this, first of all. Okay, you can see that that actually backfills everything within. So we've got our arrival, we've got our departed flags. Incidentally, guys, uh, again, because I was doing this as an example, um, the times can be altered by you, okay, if need be. Um, you can access those fairly easily. As far as getting into our order information, again, we'll just click on this example here. We'll clean up some of the things listed and I want to go into this order here, which was the one that Kyle just fictitiously did for us. Down here inside the dispatch, where the note section is, folks, you can see POD added. And so if we open that up, if my phone did the right thing, I should be able to open up the attachment from inside this page, and there's my scribbly, fictitious POD. Okay? So that's how you would capture it. And if any information needs to be updated for any reason, guys, you can send additional attachments as well. So you're not stuck with just a single. If changes or revisions are required, you're able to do that. Um, I, I guess a quick follow-up question regarding the, the app. How much is the app? That's probably the best part of all of this. If you're a Tailwind subscriber, guys, the app is free. So there is no additional charge. It is simply just us walking you through the simple steps of registering, registering pardon me, your driver through Tailwind. And once the driver has got his credentials, uh, login instructions, he's off and, and literally running or off and driving. So no charge whatsoever, no limit to how many drivers get to utilize it. Oh, um, and, and the cost of Tailwind? Cost of Tailwind, Brad, $99 per concurrent user. So as an example, folks, if you have 50 trucks, that's not going to influence our price here. If you have two people working in the office, one working the front end or operations, and perhaps the second working in the backside, ARAP and compliance, uh, 99 times 2 is $198 and that is all in. So we include everything with that, and of course the app is part of that offering. Another uh, question regarding uh, uh, customers here. Uh, if a customer tells me they pay in 45 days, is it okay for me to state that my terms are 30? Oh, I'll take, that, take one, that one, Brad. Yeah, you bet you'll take that one. Absolutely it's okay for you to state your terms. Transportation law states that freight invoices are due in seven days. Now we all know there's not many people out there, or companies out there, that pay in seven days. Some of us are lucky enough to have those customers, but most customers don't. But your terms are your terms. 
you're the person providing the service. The customer does not dictate to you. So stating your terms clearly on your invoices, whether seven days, 21 days, 15 days, whatever it might be, state those terms and yes, it's so okay for you to tell the customer, no, I'm sorry, I don't accept 45 day terms. My terms are 30 days. Oh, and we have a, a question looks like from a broker here. Are there advantages for brokers to use the POD complete app or is it specifically for carriers? Um, okay, that, that's a great question. Um, Brad, our app is designed to be used for carriers or anybody dedicated. Um, however, uh, a segue for that is with our SMS messaging capability, Certainly the app could be used for communicating within uh, the freight agent side of the business. Um, getting a little off track, we do have a third party integration with another vendor called MacroPoint, which is specifically designed for tracking and updating for any transportation professionals who do not run their own trucks or trailers. So we're hoping to cover both sides. But yes, this is principally designed for anybody that would have their own drivers, be it company or owner operators. Thanks, thanks, John. Uh, and I know we're coming up to our, our 30 minute kind of mark here. Um, it looks like uh, questions have slowed down, but if there are additional that you have, please feel free to send them through to us. Do um, you see the uh, Ask Linda at tailwindsys.com uh, on your screen there? You can give us a call, 1-866-441-0441. Um, and uh, with that, uh, I'd like to just, you know, thank you very much for attending uh, today's presentation. Um, if you're a Tailwind user, you can, uh, you know, always ask more questions also actually during in, within the app itself, or if you're not yet, you can sign up for a free uh, trial on our website, tailwindtms.com. Uh, thanks again, everyone, and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You guys.